Welcome back to another episode of Sound Pals to Go to the Movies. Today I will be reviewing the movie Bullet Train. So just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. Five assassins aboard a fast-moving bullet train find out their missions have something in common. So let's begin with my first pro. The story really gave me a vibe of an assassin movie mixed with the action style of John Wick. But of course, since we have David Leach, who was the producer in two of the John Wick's movies, but also we have the humor of Deadpool, because we have David, the director, from that, and he's also the director in this movie. But the movie movie felt like a mix but also not really since the characters do stand out on their own right during the movie when i was like who's that the movie gave me the short answer right away with the backstory which made me go like huh okay now we can move on there was no time where i was sitting in the dark to some characters that were unknown in the movie except only during prince she did kind of introduce herself to the audience rather fast but she withheld some of the true reasons she was there so that was fine but everybody else felt like they had their own standalone movie if possible and had their own backstories to them. Next, the cast. I mean, you got big names, but as I said, their characters are really interesting to see by themselves. We got Brad Pitt playing the main guy, Ladybug, going through the train and coming up against an obstacle course of assassins who each in their own way have a mission, but somehow they have ties to Brad Pitt's character. We got Bad Bunny as Wolf. We got Andrew Koji as Kimura. We got Joey King as Prince. And we got two who stole the movie from my point of view, who are Aaron Taylor Johnson as Tangerine and Brian Tyree Henry as Lemon. These two had me hanging on to the conversations they would have by themselves during the movie and I was captivated by the idea or the theory that Lemon had that was kind of weird that Thomas the Engine Show somehow showed him as a kid how to read people and that everybody could be labeled as one of the characters from the show. That was kind of amazing and hilarious at the same time. You know, it was really funny how they would start arguing about this when there was a serious scene going on. Oh, and you also had some cameos from the director David Leach, Ryan Reynolds, and Shannon Tatum. This made the movie more enjoyable to watch and say, hey, that guy's from this other movie the director directed and just a quick laugh. Next point is how this was a novel, but before I knew it, I could have swear that I could picture this as a manga with every few volumes having the main character battle each assassin as he progressed to the front of the train and just trying to get off on the next stop. But I found out later that this was actually a light novel and not a manga. So that was kind of interesting that I pictured this as a manga without knowing it was a light novel. So if you want to pick up the light novel, it's actually translated into English, you can pick it up easily. So yeah, check it out if you want. Next is the music. So having the song Staying Alive, not only in English, but also in Spanish and Japanese is what stood out to me since the beginning. It was really smooth transitions. So you hardly noticed it until after the fact that the music started playing and you heard the language. And also close to the end of the movie, there's another song, I Need a Hero in Japanese that is mixed into an action scene that is serious, but at the same time has its funny moments. And I was like, oh my God, where has this version of this song been all this time so it was fairly enjoyable to me seeing it paired up with this action scene and the element of humor on top of the seriousness action that was being projected on the screen and now moving on to my cons so the fact that the movie took place inside a train gave less room to play around with the wider areas i noticed that the train had people on board but then slowly they started getting off along the stops on the way to the end but then i noticed that there was no staff or conductors at the end but we never saw them get off or get killed it would have made sense and it would have been nice if some of the good assassins would have told these people to get off for their own good, for their protection, and just basically get them out of the way and show us. But hey, this is a little nitpick that I had a little issue with the movie, but not really significant impact. Next is the special effects. At the end of the film, the scene when the main bad guy gets his face sliced off, there's a second where the special effects made me feel that there was something wrong because it was either a bad rotoscoping or layering that I noticed wasn't really fitting well. So you could have seen like it was more of a amateurish special effect so for a split second i was taken out of the movie for that then right after that there's a scene where a pole falls over a car and you can tell that brad pitt and sandra bullock are not in the same shot due to the bad special effects that gave me another element of like you know what this is the part where they started losing some money in the budget but everything else on the train was done well the special effects the sound effects but once you get to the end when it's basically a wider area a shot in a studio that's when you start falling apart next there was a few times close to the the end where they could have ended the movie but they didn't so you kind of got a fake out and for me they seemed unnecessary in the movie to be part of it it's almost like when you're about to fall asleep and then you get waken up by yourself thinking about that chore that if you did it or didn't and then when you're fully awake you realize hey i did finish it and you try to go back to sleep so it kind of took me out of the movie saying like oh it's about to end i'm getting ready to get up and all of a sudden it's like oh no we still have a few minutes to go it didn't happen just once it happened a few times so we could have done without these fake outs 
out. My grade for the movie is going to be a 7.5 out of 10. This movie is the kind of movie that you want to see to kill time, but also enjoy for its humor, but not really laughing at the movie, but with it, and also having some action scenes that were really well done. The cast are great, especially Lemon and Tangerine. They stole the movie for me. If you like funny characters, but also like kick-ass action scenes, and the story that they try to play six degrees of separation with the main characters to the assassins on the train, then this is your movie. By all means, this is not an Oscar nominee, but it's a decent watch. So that does it for this review of Bullet Train. Please join us next time where we're going to review The Invitation. As you all know, there has been someone missing from this table. But that once broken bond will be renewed tonight. <laughs> to Eve. My new bride. I want to go home. But this is your home. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.